I get asked almost every day which camera I would get if I could only have one. First of all, it would have to be a pocketable premium compact camera with a larger sensor. It is what I enjoy using the most. Of course, they are not great for wildlife, birds, sports and such, but I would give that ability up if I had to. This is a little comparison of my current favorites. And let me say that one more time. My favorite cameras, so try to ease off on the fanboy psycho behavior. Bigger cameras like the Leica Q and the Sony RX1 or Mark II is out. So is the excellent X100F. Because even though they are pocketable in a winter jacket, I wouldn't want them as my only camera. If I can only have one, I have set the bar at being comfortable in something like a hoodie or a sports jacket. So for me, a big DSLR, a bigger compact like the X100F are all B cameras. The lineup consists of the Sigma GP1. The Leica X1. The Fuji X70. And lastly, the Ricoh GR Mark II. All of which have been reviewed on this channel in the past, and if you look through the videos, you will see over a hundred sample images. They are all small enough, well built, have excellent image quality, and they all have an APS-C side sensor. First, let's compare size. The Leica X1 is the biggest, but not the heaviest. It feels very solid and premium. Heaviest is actually the tiny bit smaller Fuji X70. The weight is annoying, but it's okay, because it's the only one with a tiltable screen. Something I wish all street cameras will have in the future. The Sigma DP1 is 60 grams lighter and not as plasticky as the Fuji. Please note that mine is fitted with a third-party grip. Smallest and by far the lightest is the Ricoh GR Mark II. It's straight up tiny, so 3 points for the Ricoh. More important on your only camera is the grip. The X70 is the worst for my hands. With the leather half case it's outstandingly comfortable, but we are comparing them as they sit today. Next we have the DP1, it's the same thing there. Without the grip it's still nice, but not better than the X1, which is surprisingly comfortable. This really was an easy win for the Ricoh. I have bigger than average hands and it's still by far the most comfortable grip. Let's compare controls. At the bottom we find the Sigma. It has the best manual focus control in the world, more on that later, but otherwise it's just okay, which in this lineup isn't exactly a bad grade. The Ricoh has excellent controls, everything is one-handed. The reason the X70 is ahead is physical controls. There's no denying the speed and accuracy that that brings. The one thing I don't like is the aperture and focus ring. Since it's electronic anyway, the only reason to have it on the lens is style, and it's not even retro. The worst part is that it makes the camera two-handed. The like has got it right, retro and functional, it's all at your fingertips. Ok, that was exposure, let's talk manual focus. Fuji is dead last for putting it as a ring on the lens and not letting you read write it to a wheel. The Leica is much better with a thumb wheel, also much faster. On second place we have the Ricoh, just check my reviews. Assigning custom distances, snap, full press snap, it's a game changer. But the win goes to the DP1 for the best manual focus on a bi-wire lens in the history of the world.
Now, autofocus. It doesn't need much testing. The Rico is fastest than Fuji, Leica, and the Sigma is last. The lenses are all very good. If you are looking for clinical sharpness, the Rico is the sharpest, but I don't care about that, so no such points will be awarded. I am looking for the mojo I get with the lens coupled to the specific sensor. Then it's a win for the Leica. But one point deduction for being a 35mm equivalent instead of my preferred 28mm. Second is the Sigma that loses one point for being an f4 maximum aperture. Then we have the Ricoh and Fuji is last. Traditional comparison I could agree to do is close a focus. Last is Sigma, then Leica, Rico, and a win for Fuji. By the way, they are all leaf shutters with crazy high flash sync speeds. So only the Fuji gets one point for being able to sync up to 1 4,000th of a second at the widest aperture, which even beats the Fuji X100F. Dynamic range and being able to push shadows are important to me and the way I shoot. And here the Sigma is last, then Leica, and I will call it a draw between the Fuji and Rico. To test color we will do it two ways. One test for me and one for the public. So I took all the cameras and added the Sigma DP3 Quattro as well as the Fuji X Pro 2 just for funsies published images of the same things on two separate forums as well as Facebook and asked which colors people liked the best. The Rico crushed it with a huge margin, Leica came in second, the Sigma DP1 was third and the Fuji was fourth. Now my test, which is actually using the cameras and taking real images. Here the DP3 Quattro would easily be the winner, but let's focus on the smaller ones. Number one is the Leica Mojo. Then we have the Sigma DP1. Fuji and Rico gets one point each. And in black and white, easy victory for the Rico, then Sigma. Leica and Fuji shares the third spot. That's it, let's have a look at the score before I hand out the extra points. We see the Rico in a comfortable lead in front of the Leica X1. Now extra points. Sigma gets 35 points for only costing me $28. The Fuji gets a 27 point tilt screen bonus. And the Leica gets a good looking award of 5 points. The Rico gets 25 points for the built in ND filter and another 50 for winning the main event. The Fuji gets 59 points for not needing an ND filter. The Leica gets 30 points for being the oldest and 48 points for having awesome controls. The Sigma gets a 50 point manual focus bonus and 1 point for every layer of the three-layered tastiness that is the Fovian sensor. And would you look at that, a tie. Check out my review videos of these cameras and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.